Hello, hello, and welcome to Rower's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we're going to be talking about chest harness flow. I'm going to be showing you a simple chest harness, but we're mostly going to be talking about flow, how not to fight against it, and where to go, how to not overly complicate the tie that you're trying to create. Something I may or may not suffer from sometimes. One of the things you have to do is kind of let go and let the creative juices flow. All right, now you're just kissing ass in order to save face. How dare you? You stay out of it. I don't even want to talk about you right now. A menace to society she is. Now, before we get started, we must first talk about safe, sane, and consensual safety. Be sure to have some safety shirts with you at all times. You can always get a new rope. Can't get a new life. And consensual, me, Marie, and Crochet Rory are all consenting adults. Communication is key. Now, before we take a deep dive into this simple chest weave harness, we must first thank my sponsors, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1,100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code Rory10 for 10% off. So flow, what kind of ridiculous artistic jargon is that? Well, <laughs> simply the flow of expression. I think we all think of a river when we think of flow. It's natural and powerful and fighting against that flow often yields negative results. So when we think of artistic flow, it's about creating something that feels natural and powerful and fighting against that, thinking too hard against that disrupts flow and thus disrupts the art that you're trying to create. So how do we create flow? How do we think of something as flowing? Well, this little exercise will help to demonstrate that. It's using a simple chest weave and it's teaching you how to not fight against what feels right. So come on, let's get our flow on. So I have the bite of my rope, the middle of my rope, and I'm only gonna use one rope for this. We don't want to overly complicate the flow like we had just talked about. So I'm gonna take the bite of my rope, I'm gonna put it around the back of the neck, and we'll get started from there. So to start with our flow exercise, we're gonna do a crossover, and what does the rope want to do? When you look at the river, where does the river go? These are going to the sides already, so follow that way. They're gonna go around the sides and around the back. Once around the back, we need to distribute our flow from here on out. What feels right to you? Do they feel like just crossing over each other, going that way? Do they feel like going back upwards? Do they feel like crossing each other like that, tightening and going back once they came? How does the flow feel to you? What feels right? When you think about the decision, does it have this nice, warm gut feeling for you? Follow that. That's the river, baby. We're following that. For me, we're doing this. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit, and we're gonna go back around. Once we've come back around, we need to think about our flow again, what feels right. Don't think too hard, that initial gut feeling. Where does it wanna go? Well, it wanna follow its bros. That's where it wants to go. So we're gonna do a weave. Since its neighbor rope right here went over, this one's gonna go under. Simple, easy. One of the difficult things you can do to yourself and to your tie is to overcomplicate it. Following with the weave, this one went over, its neighbor rope went over as it follows with it, as it flows with it. So this one's gonna go under, under, over. What goes under must go over, so saith the roaring. Uh, so. Even when coming up with something like that, that little catchphrase that I do now, so saith the roaring, that was a simple flow. It felt right. People responded well to it, keep doing it. It's a thing I do now. Cool, we got that flow going back. Let's go back to the back. Where's this river taking us? So yes, I am teaching you something. However, a lot of this is gonna be open to your interpretation, to your own feelings. If I switch up from what feels right to you, watch the rest of the tutorial, and then go from where you diverged from me where your river went into its own rivulet and you followed it on its path. 
So, I'm gonna cross these over. Cool. Loving it already. Actually, I'm gonna cross them over this way because this part right here is on its high horse and this one is depressed. So what do we do to our friends on their high horse? We ground them by going over them. And the ones that are depressed, well, we uplift them by going underneath. Cool. We'll follow this simple flow for this side of the weave. Awesome. It looks pretty, but where do we go from here? Well, I'm gonna follow the flow of the sides. So this one went under, now it's gonna go over this one. Aha, that way when we do cross over and go back this way, it has natural push. If I were to go this other way, ah, oh, that's what happens when I go to the side, that's off. Now if I go this way, aha, natural push. It locks into place right here. We're locking it down so the, the, the ropes don't go, oh, happy crazy. We're going to the sides and back around. So we're going to come back around and we'll continue with this weave, following the natural flow. We don't need to disrupt anything right now. Following my neighbor rope, went over and then under. So now we're going to go under and then over. Simple flow. Follow that river. Listen to TLC. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the ticket. That's how you're gonna get that cool, young, impressionable audience, Rory. <laughs> Referencing Sweet 90 music. <laughs> awesome. Loving it. Feels good. Murray, how does it feel? Radical. Let's go back to the back. So as I come around the back, what I did here originally when I came over the shoulders was I crossed over in the next. So then I have to think, well, do I cross over an X right here? Do I go down here and cross over for an X? None of that feels right. That doesn't feel like it's going with my flow. So why do I need to cross at all when I come over a second time? I don't, I can just go over here and cross down below. So why not do that? Right here, I had a problem. I'm thinking too much about it. I'm trying to overcomplicate it. Slow down. Think about that flow. Does that feel right? No. Didn't feel right to me. I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna go with the weave here. Following my neighbor ropes, checking out what goes under and what goes over so I can mimic that. And then same with here. Gotta find the natural flow with these knots. Where does the X feel right? Since I just went under here, I'm gonna go over this next one. That's the easiest way to find it. Or you can just try it out and be like, ooh, nope, that doesn't lock in place right. Ah, but that does. All right, let's go back around. Now, when I came back around, I could go back up here and complete the weave that way, but I decided to go under the bust, cross, and continue on this weaving pattern up here. Why? I don't want to sound like a broken record but here, but flow, obviously. It's what felt right to me. Will that feel right to you? You won't know until you get there, really. And that's the fun of it. Let's check out that back. Now I imagine most of you will be uh, running out of rope by now, but I think I can do one more down and about. So I'm gonna follow this neighbor rope. The rope the flow feels good to me. Make sure that I'm getting this part right back towards the front. So this is essentially the ends of my rope that I'm working with right now. So what's a boy to do? Well, I can continue to weave like I have done here and then finish it up with a square knot down here. Or alternatively, if you have less than this, I can show you how to put one up in the shoulder area right here. We're gonna utilize the work of a cow hitch. So I'm gonna bring these together. I'm gonna go underneath all of them. See, I've created this U shape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over them and then underneath myself, which is going to lock myself into place with that right here. And then essentially with this right here, I'm going to follow backwards what I just did. So if we follow backwards, it's going to go over and then under and then over myself. So we're gonna go over and then under which will then lead to going over myself. And that right there, wah, will lock this into place. Pull it down a little bit to get the tightness you want. Awesome, that'll stay in place. And if you want to, you can go down, underneath all of them again, 
over and under yourself to create a little extra tension and friction inside there in order to hold that in place. You still got that little extra. Oh yeah, I think just barely. Ooh. I can create a second cow hitch in there. Ha ha ha. Which creates its own little buckling design, which looks nice. Let's do that to the other side too. Now, I didn't have to do this, but you know what? Ooh, the flow felt right. Having these little buckle clasps means that I'm not overcomplicating what's going down on the weaving down over here that we were doing. It gives a separate design that is also really solid in structure, but also keeps things simple. We don't want to overcomplicate things. Specificity can often be the enemy of flow. That's how the back ended up looking nice. And back to the front where we're also doing nice. Was it overly complicated? No. It was simple. It felt right. We followed what felt right. So experiment with flow. Try and discover new ways to flow. Maybe it was something that we did over here in the second loop around. Change something up there. And you'll notice how one small change will make an entirely different river as they fork into two beautiful different designs. Experiment with it. At least experiment within the nice safe parameters of SSC or RICK. I know I can help you express yourself to be your better self. Well, hey, I hope you had as much fun learning from that tutorial as we did at teaching it to you. I have no idea where Marie is, which really concerns me. We should really put a bell on her. Yeah, you're probably right. I'll end up hearing that bell in my deepest nightmares. Anywho, I would be remiss if I did not bring up my other lovely sponsors for today, the wonderful people over at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Rory's Brainworks, just like this YouTube channel. They are my rope vanguard, my colonizers of dreams. And without them, these ropey endeavors would be <laughs> way harder to accomplish. Thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of ropey things you would like us to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is our brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe. Go create some art.